In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make this very nice, compact oil pumping unit. This could be used to pump oil out of an inboard boat engine, making the job very easy. You can use it to pump oil out of your vehicle's engine, especially useful if you're an older person, still want to change your oil, or maybe you have a physical disability that prevents you from getting underneath your vehicle to do the oil change. With this unit, you'll be able to do that very easily. You can also take your transmission fluid, pump it out of the transmission, add new transmission fluid, five quarts, ride the vehicle for a couple of days, pump it out again, add another five quarts to the transmission, and by doing that, you're going to rejuvenate at least half to three quarters of the transmission fluid that's inside your transmission. This could be used for engine oil, transmissions, power steering fluid, and according to the manufacturer, you can pump fuel oil as well as diesel. You do not pump gas with this unit, very dangerous, so don't even think of doing it, but you can use it for all kinds of oils. Okay, let me show you how this was made in detail, and then I'm going to give you a quick demonstration. As usual, links to these products, such as the motor, switches, and everything else that I used, will be placed in the video description area. Now, I decided to use a 1.5 gallon laundry detergent container. It was free when I was done using my detergent. I just cleaned the bottle out. If you don't want to use this one here, which is really compact with the handle on it, then you can use a three gallon bucket that has a lid on it. Everything you see here would be connected to the lid. You'd pop the lid onto the three gallon bucket and you can carry everything by the handle. When you purchase this oil pumping unit, it comes with a cord right over here. It's not too long, but it does stretch. And you're going to have these alligator clamps to use. I didn't want to use that. I wanted a much longer cord that wasn't going to have this pulling effect on it. So I took an extension cord. This is a 16 gauge or an 18 gauge. Easily handle up to 10 amps. I took that, put the clamps on the end, and I also added an inline fuse holder inside. Here's a 10 amp fuse. And I purchased this line switch, red is on. This is a 5 amp line switch, and it cuts right into the cable very simply. I'll put that link in the video description area as well. The unit comes with a switch on it. But because I did not want to use this housing because it was so bulky, and I wanted extra cooling on the unit, that's why I added the switch. Now I'm going to show you a schematic, how this was wired up in a minute, but over here, there's also that I added a thermal switch. So this is designed not to be run more than 30 minutes continuously. I wanted to make sure that the motor did not get too hot if I was using this on a very hot day. So what I did is I added this thermal switch. It's a 90 degree Celsius switch. If it does heat up too much, it's going to open up the circuit, turning off power to that motor, allowing it to cool. In order to pump oil into the bottle, you need to let air escape. So that's what this rubber plug is for. You're going to use a unibit to drill all the holes in this bottle because it makes a nice clean hole. And if you don't know what a unibit looks like, it looks like what you see right over here. It's a step drill that makes a very nice clean hole. Now the motor draws around 5 amps, or a little under, and I wanted to be able to have a feature inside this bottle that when you go to pump, of course it's going to be as shown on this end. I want to make sure that the oil can't fill up too high and then overflow the bottle or run out of the hole. So what I did, right over here, you can see it bolted in. There's a neoprene washer and a nut. That is a float switch. It's a stainless steel float switch. And when the oil rises up to a high enough level, it's going to turn off this relay, which in turn turns off the power to the motor. In this image here, looking inside the bottle, you can see what the float switch looks like. Once I installed everything, I also applied some E6000 over the threads and onto the plastic. It bonds very well to the plastic, and it's also oil and gas resistant. And here's a close-up of the float switch. You have an E-clip on the end. It's all stainless steel. You can see there's an O-ring and a washer. The relay is a 10-amp rated relay, and that's bonded to the bottle using E6000. This relay is designed to handle the current from the motor because the float switch is not designed to handle that much current. When you purchase the pumping unit, it also includes tubing. Now the tubing was pretty good for the discharge side, but I noticed for the suction side it was not good. 
it tried to collapse a little bit when the oil was very warm. So go pick up this braided tubing. You can get that in any hardware store. I think I paid around a dollar a foot. You're only going to need about three feet of it. You're also going to need what you see right here. Inside this 3 8 hose is a 3 8 brass barb, a couple of nylon ties. Over here is a quarter inch female pipe thread fitting on this end. You're going to thread in this quarter inch male pipe that has a 3 16 barb on the opposite side. Keep in mind the tubing is smaller than the barb, so what you're going to do is take this tube, heat up some water in the microwave to where it's boiling, put the tube in the water, about an inch of it, it's going to soften it, then you slide it over the barb so it stretches. Put a nylon tie and you're good to go. Over here you can see there's a rubber cap on the end of the tube. That's very useful when you're done pumping the oil out of your engine or transmission. You just slide that on and it prevents any oil from dripping out of the tube all over the floor. Now the way this motor was bolted onto this bottle, you see there's a thicker brass rail right here. That brass rail has two holes drilled in it. There's stainless steel bolts that go through. In between this brass rail and the plastic bottle is a neoprene washer. On the other side, which is the inside, there's another neoprene washer, a stainless washer, and then a lock nut. I unscrewed this, reached in with a box end wrench, held it as I tightened down the Phillips screw to secure the rail. Once the rail was secured, I then made these little clips, I'll show you a different angle in a minute, that fit over the motor and locked down, and it's just nylon tied onto the rail. Over here shows the direction of flow, copied off the plastic cover that this was encased in. Inlet, there's your outlet. Let's take a look straight down. I'll show you these clips, how I made them, and then you'll see the two bolts that go through the bottle. And right here you can see the two Phillips screws, one on the left of the gear and the one on the right of the gear that goes through the thick brass strap into the container. And then you have these clips right here. They hook over the top, go all the way down, and overlay the thicker strip, and they're held down with nylon ties. Does not move, and it's a good design to keep it in position. Now over here, I have a 90 degree fitting, which is a 5 16 hose barb, it's nylon, and the right side is a 3 8 pipe. I put a washer behind the fitting so it doesn't wobble back and forth. There's a neoprene washer between the metal washer and the plastic cap. And on the other side, in order to allow this to tighten down securely, I used a 3 8 inch bushing, which looks like what you see right here. Once you're done pumping oil with the unit, what you're going to do is reinstall this plug, push it down nice and tight. Once that's done, then you can pick up the unit and lay it the proper way on the ground. Take it to an oil collection center, and when you do, you're just going to pop this cover off, pull the plug out, and then you can push the button down and allow all the oil to drain out. Okay, you have your 12 volt positive supply goes into your 10 amp inline fuse. From there it goes to the line switch. After the single pole line switch goes to this point here and it ties into the common terminal of the 12 volt relay. Over here you're going to continue on to the float switch and as you can see it would normally look like this in the open position but because there's no excess of oil in the tank causing it to float up it's going to be closed. From this point here, it goes to one side of the relay coil. The other side of the relay coil here goes all the way around and ties into the negative of the battery. Over here, ties to the negative of the motor or the pump assembly. You're going to use the normally open contact on the relay, which is in this position. And that goes to the thermal switch, which is a 90C, 5 amp. You don't have to have it but I decided to install one and from that point it goes to the positive of the motor. When the float rises up, power is disconnected from the relay coil in turn turning off the motor. Very simple. Okay, to pump the oil out of your engine or your transmission, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the engine is warmed up. So start up the engine, let it run for five minutes. When it's warmed up, shut the engine off. The viscosity of the oil will be much lower making it easier to pump. You're going to take the end of this tube, insert it into either the transmission 
all the way down to where it hits the bottom of the pan, or you could do it into your oil pan, push it all the way down until you feel it hit the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, you're good to go. You're going to take the positive clamp, connect it to the positive on the battery, negative to the negative on the battery. The next step, take the rubber plug out of the bottle to allow the air to escape as the oil is being pumped into the bottle. You can then turn on the unit and begin pumping. Okay, let me give you a quick demonstration. Recently on my vehicle, I replaced my motor oil with full synthetic as well as an expensive additive. So I'm not going to be pumping my oil out of the vehicle for this demonstration into the bottle because there is older oil that was inside that bottle. I don't want to have the two mix and have to dump it back into my engine. I'm going to be taking a bottle of 10W40 which has been warmed up to around 130 degrees and I'm going to place it right on the bottom step which is the same height as the bottom of my oil pan in the engine. It's very important when you use this unit that it's placed the height of the engine. You don't want to go too high otherwise it's going to require too much lift to get it to be drawn into the motor so you always want to keep it around the height of the engine to ensure easy pumping of the oil. So let me connect up the bottle on the bottom step, insert the tube that would normally go into the dipstick into the bottom of the bottle and then I'm going to turn on the pump. You're going to see how it primes up and we're going to see how long it takes to pump out one quart of oil from that bottle. I'm going to turn on the switch. You're going to see the oil get quickly drawn up. It's going to take a little bit of time to fill that tube. Once it fills the tube, you'll see it pumping very easily right through that tube on the outlet side. I'm then going to take the camera and give you a close-up showing the oil shooting inside the bottle. Here we go. Once that oil reaches this point, then we'll go right through it. Okay, it's now primed and it will run continuously. process will take between 5 and 10 minutes to completely pump all the oil out of your engine. If it's around 5 quarts or if it's the transmission, it'll be a little quicker because the transmission fluid is much thinner. Half the oil is out of the bottle. Getting down near the bottom here now. There's about a half of an inch left inside that bottle. You'll see once it gets to the bottom, it'll suck air in very quickly, and the sound of the pump will change. At that point, I'll turn the switch off. There you go. Empty. And it's as simple as that. If you're going to pump all the oil or transmission fluid 
from your vehicle or your boat, it's just going to take a little longer to get the job done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.